Good evening. Thank you very, very much for coming so numerous to this uh, talk. I'm totally amazed. <laughs> this is the, the point of the eye, we say in German, for this stay, my first stay here in Western Canada, in Vancouver. We have never been there. I go to the United States in several years, very frequently, six, four to six times per year, but Canada rarely. So, <clears throat> it's a little bit closer to Europe, so the vibration <laughs> seems a little bit more European here. Of course, it is, I like very much. So, as you might <clears throat> notice, I'm not a native from here, I'm coming from Switzerland, and, uh, well, I, I do teaching in the United States since about 16 years it's now. We even built up a network, the Merriam Institute, the Biological Medicine Network in the United States. And we have also many Canadian colleagues, or doctors and naturopaths, who came to my seminars over the last 10, 15 years. So it's quite a big community which uh, works biologically. It was a big pleasure to meet many years ago, well, several years ago, uh, Terry and Carly, thank you very much for inviting me. And I am really amazed how you bring this class together. You must have a, a mailing list of 10,000 or 20,000, I don't know when, <coughs> so that you that you get such a big crowd into this room. Thank you very much. So, <clears throat> well, what is the theme? The theme is biological medicine. We have to pack it into a other theme, into a more detailed themes. And it was, you see, already the first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> healthy gut, it should be healthy body. So, <clears throat> this is very important that you have to know if you do what we call biological medicine. Bios is the life, logical, because it's so logical. It is the primary medicine, not a complementary. It's really the basic medicine with which we treat all the patients. In our clinic, this is the biggest clinic uh, for this kind of, well, you would say the alternative or the complementary medicine in the German-speaking world. So we are the biggest and I had the opportunity 22 years ago to be asked if I would take over the lead of this, at this time, small clinic and now it's quite a big one. We have, <coughs> well these are the, the web pages. Please come after the speech or go by there and take a brochure about that because in here is all the detailed information how you get, can get in contact to us. We have every year about 150 to 200 patients from the North America, Canada and, and US, more from US unfortunately, so I would like to have more from Canada, who come to us. Who comes to us? These are the patients who have not been successful with other means. So, in a way, we get difficult patients, or patients with difficult diagnoses. That's why they come, and I must say, I like the patients with the difficult diagnoses, because we approach different. I don't say we approach better, we just approach different. And there are metabolic pathways which need that the pathway gets supported instead of suppressed. We, because we do, never do anti-treatment, we always do pro-treatment. We activate your body's healing capacity, but we activate it very specifically, and that's the big difference. So, this works on cancer, this works on autoimmune diseases, this works on allergies, this works on chronic infections. <coughs> I studied in Switzerland, but I also studied in, in US. I made the final degree in Philadelphia, and so at this time it was possible to study at two locations at the same time. This is why <coughs> I know a little bit English. So, we have, as Terry told us already, we have uh, 10 dentists, uh, 10 
10 doctors, 3 dentists, and we integrate the dental uh, issues very uh, intensively in our treatment, and we have quite a big staff now. So it is daily 200 to 350 patients. This means patients from the area. Of course, we have a lot of patients from our area which just come as out outpatients. But we always have about 30 in so-called inpatients who come to us from all over the world, more and more also from the Eastern world, Far East, Middle East, we get a lot of patients. But the main group of the non-European is Canada and US. So <clears throat> you are welcome. After the speech, we will talk a little bit more. We also have a little hotel. We have two hotels in which we cooperate very, very intensively. We have our own little hotel where the patients can stay cheap and we have it for the correct diet because the nutrition, you will see afterwards, is extremely important to change the metabolism. When you come for two weeks or three weeks, we need this short time to do a switch in your body. Because afterwards you have to continue at home, to continue with the good treatment. Thanks God we have here Finlandia Pharmacy. They provide the whole medication which we, which we need to continue the treatment. Thank you to this pioneer work, Harlan. It's really very uh, good for well, the medical, biological medical world. And Terry, who took over the, the Sanum products, who took over the... And, founded the Terra Medica and the biomedicine so that our kind of medicine gets taught here in the United States and in Canada. That's really big, big and important work they do. You see beautiful country, it's the view out of our hotel when, <coughs> where we see to the mountains. Well, if I show this picture in Arizona, then they say, ooh, goes through the, but if I show it here, not a single reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I realized very much that you, you tried to copy Switzerland here with your landscape. <laughs> this honors me, of course. <clears throat> Okay, who treats differently has to think differently. And I would like to talk a little bit about this different thinking. Why is the intestinal system related to immune strengths? Without intestinal health, you don't have a good immune system. Who? I'm coming for cancer. I'm coming for lupus, I'm coming for multiple sclerosis, why do you treat my intestines? Because the intestinal system is carrier of the immune system. <clears throat> it steers the well-being and the mental capacity. Oh doctor, with this strange diet which I learned with you, I got much more alert. I'm no more depressed, I sleep well. What does this have to do with the intestines? Because the intestines is one of the most important neuroendocrine, neurotransmitter producer. Serotonin, the happiness hormone, histamine is produced, gamma amino benzoesäure acid is produced in the intestines. The intestinal wall is producer of hormones. Not only the ovaries and the testicles, no, no, it is much, much more the intestines. Next, upbuilding forces, what is this? Did you know that the body regenerates in six years? Not a single cell is the same in seven years, in seven years, not a single cell in children even quicker. What is the fire of this rebuilding? Where is this fire? Did you know that in the intestines you have a temperature which is two centigrade higher than the rest of the body? Because there is the fire which activates the whole metabolism. The <clears throat> and we call it the upbuilding force, the real anti-aging. We get a lot of patients, especially from Far East, from Middle East, for anti-aging, well-aging. I like the name well-aging much better. Yeah, it's better like this. So. <clears throat> So, 
So we do our anti-aging over the inner change and never with creams and with hormones and so. No, anti-aging comes from inside. Nobody would believe that I'm 80 years old. <laughs> <coughs> so? No. <laughs> no fear, it's not true. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Intestines and health, because, because the gut connects us with the environment. I was forced and asked and written to me, please speak about electromagnetic load. I say, well, this is a problem which is not on the scene today. I can't do this. And when patients come to us with EMF load, with all these electromagnetic problems because of the towers, because of the smart uh, meters and so on, which is horrible, my understanding, but we can't change the world. The people have their mobile phone, the people look the television and so on. We have to make them more resistant, less sensitive for this radiation. And there we are back at the intestines. At the upbuilding forces, at the parasympathetic system, which is also in the intestines. The unconscious nerve system, which gets so much irritated by whatever towers, whatever smart meters, whatever television, whatever bad habit to phone all the time and to sit at your mobile phones. Of course, this is very, very uh, hurting and it's very not much not good for the health, but this is nowadays world. We can work against this. You have to work against this. But we can also show you the method why, how you can get more resistant to all these loads. And I think we have to work on ourselves instead of blaming the environment. So that's my understanding. The gut also regulates the acid-base metabolism. I will talk about the metabolism afterwards, the acid-base situation, the hyperacidity, which is one of the main causes to get chronically sick. The gut is a very important hormone producer, serotonin, as I said, even dopamine, as I said, histamine, which makes the whole irritation of the immune system when you are allergic. It is always an intense irritation of the intestines, mostly due to food allergy. comes later if I have time enough. Because everything which we build <coughs> in and comes up goes through the intestines. Sorry, there is another mistake. What we take up, what we want, that our cells take into themselves so that we have better cells, it has to go through the intestines. Without healthy intestines, no chance to rebuild your tissue. That's why all the patients, and we have very sick people coming to us, very difficult diagnosis, we always work on the intestines and I'm so sorry you have to change your nutrition if you want to change your inner milieu. You are the doctor. I only tell you how to do but you have to do it. It's not really so nice that to, to realize that we have to be active ourselves. We have to do from inside something when we really want to change something. <clears throat> Not all patients like this so much. And because the gut is the carrier and regulator of the unconscious nerve system. Are you sensitive? Can't you sleep? Don't you have correct day-night rhythms? These are all depending on the intestinal system because the intestinal system, which is the biggest organ, 20,000 square feet or 2,000 square meter surface, like a big football field, is our intestinal membranes and it's covered with bacteria. It has a grass, the lawn, lawn, the bacteria, grass, so to say, on these intestines. The bacteria layer on the intestines and they are the carrier of the unconscious nerve system, the carrier of sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve system. 
which steals the day night rhythm, which steals all the rhythmics in the body, which steals the hormone production. The gut, <coughs> the vagal system, especially the parasympathetic, which makes us resistant, again for the EMF people, which makes us resistant to environmental influences and <coughs> steers the upbuilding and recovery. If you have a good intestinal system, you would be much more resistant to environmental influences. And this is the key to the, real, uh, to the real problem. The sympathetic nerve system, which is also laid in the gut, in the abdominal area. The sim the, this is all, for example, did you ever think about that you have to breathe? Did you think that you have to stimulate your heart? Did you think about that you close and open your eye? Did you think about that the peristaltics have to work? This is the unconscious nerve system. And you just take it as granted that everything works. But it only works if the intestinal membranes are okay. And what can we do that these intestinal membranes are okay? So you see, we speak about totally different diseases here. It's not even the disease of colitis, ulcerative colitis, or Crohn's disease, or chronic diarrhea. Well, this is easy, because then we only have to work on the intestines. But if you have chronic headache, if you have migraine, if you even have epileptic seizures, if you have coronary heart disease, such diseases also related to the intestines as the basic organ. That's why we need a good pit and a good system to upbuild the intestines in its whole. Now, let us go to another issue. Well, do you know what hyperacidity is? Is this also a word which is known in the Canadian society? Yeah, the yeah. problem of hyperacidity? Yes. Let, us, <coughs> let us talk about what it is. Perhaps I have to stand here so that I'm not interfering. The problem of the hyperacidity and the hyperprotein situation. Now, Hyperacidity begins in the gut and is very easy to treat. What does hyperacidity make? It make? It's the main cause for coronary heart disease. One of the biggest killer worldwide, coronary heart disease, uh, heart infarction and so on. And also metabolic diseases. You can only get very chronically sick if you have a hyperacidity. It makes the blood thicker. I don't dare to, uh, to ask who has blood co anticoagulants. Well, you don't have to hand put up your hands, but I know it's a lot of a high percentage nowadays. Most are not necessary. Lowers the oxygen uptake and uh, to the cells if you are hyperacid. Hyperacidity can be treated by very simple remedies. You can buy them in Finlandia Pharmacy. It's alkala, it's an alkaline powder. It's the key against the anti-acid, uh, hyperacidity. And you have to change the nutrition. The cause for the hyperacidity, which is one of the main causes for, uh, for chronic diseases, is too much protein in food and, <coughs> oops, too much protein in the food and too little essential amino acids, too much sugar, dairy, proteins. So, now we have a test method, it's the dark field microscopy. I know it's not an officially registered method in orthodox medicine, but it's something which shows us very quickly and very simple in a lifeblood uh, drop, which we test, if you have such a blood, these are the red blood cells, or if you have such good blood here. Now, oops. <coughs> now, if you have this coagulation, this hyper, uh, this rouleau building, we call it, this sticking together, who wonders that 
such a blood needs a high blood pressure. The patient comes with a high blood pressure to me and says, oh, I would like to get away from the medication. I have so high blood pressure, which is so frequent. I make the dark field and I say, oops, I tell the patient, congratulations that you get a high blood pressure. This is needed because otherwise it wouldn't spread the cells out of one another if you have such a congested blood. And why do they have such a congested blood? Because they have a hyperacidity. It's the main cause also for sensitivity to in environmental influences. Again, for the EMF people. Now, let us go to the basics. This, what now comes, is extremely important. Patients very often tell me, I am eating so well, I have a good nutrition, what should I change now? What is the good nutrition nowadays? In 1950, I do not know the numbers of Canada, but probably they are very similar to the United States and also to Germany and to Switzerland. The habits of nutrition of the, in the Western world is more or less everywhere the same. 1950, the statistical, statistical department of Switzerland and Germany, 1950 also in the United States, began to evaluate what is the average nutrition of the population. And this is a government number, not Dr. Rao's crazy ideas. No, it is a government number <coughs> from statistics. And they have shown the US population, 1950, was eating 45 grams of protein per day in average. And they calculated and defined as 100% the mineral intake, trace element and mineral intake of the average population. This was the beginning of this test. And now they are still doing the same thing in Switzerland and Germany also. We have practically the same numbers. In US, the daily protein intake, 132 grams per day, 2008. The tripling of the protein intake, three times more. But even if you are an athlete and a very healthy person, a young person who can process and metabolize very well, you can't process more than 60 grams per day. Perhaps some athlete can pro uh, process five, seven, 75. But normal people like we are in our age, Sorry, but we can only process about 45 grams of protein. What is more sticks into the body and gets stored somewhere. Protein as glue sticks in the tissue. You can't process, but you do not eliminate. That's why you attract water, because protein has a osmotic tendency and attracts water and also gets switched to, <coughs> that's a process, metabolic process, to fatty tissue. So it is not the question of fat intake if you get fat. It's the, it's the, the, the question of carbohydrates and protein intake if you get metabolically so weak that you get storing uh, material. Now, when we look at the intake of minerals nowadays, it is 25%, one quarter of what our grandparents 1950, 60 years ago had. So you see our good civilization food, it changed our intake absolutely fundamentally and this is really very bad because we have a hyper proteinization and we have a hypo which means too little mineralization of our system and this is the, the very bad the bad uh, situation so we can't use ourselves anymore because we are 
glued in our tissues. And this makes the chronic diseases. Who wonders that our blood gets sticky? Who wonders that we can't take uh, oxygen up anymore so well? And not only this, well, <coughs> this magne the decreased magnetic cell load makes us susceptible to many different diseases, for example, EMF diseases too. The intake of minerals, which is dramatically reduced. That's why we get so sensitive. And the daily protein intake makes a hyperproteinization. Proteins consist of amino acids. The molecule protein is composed by amino acids. So you have a hyperproteinization, which is a hyperamino acidization, a hyperacidity. Hyperacidity comes from too much protein intake. Therefore, please go away from the thinking more meat is better, less meat is better. <clears throat> Sugar consumption increased by factor 10 since 1948. It's unbelievable what we eat and drink as sugar, especially the children. And this makes sugar works acid because sugar fermentates and builds lactic acid in the tissue. Therefore, the, the cells no more take oxygen and oxygenate for their, for, the, for their metabolism. No, they fermentate and they build the, the bad lactic acid and make a hyperacidity because we eat too much sugar. Sugar not only makes fat, it also reduces our metabolism and it makes the body more aging because the more acid you are, the more you get aging. Sugar makes acid. Acidity makes you susceptible to infections, electromagnetic influences and aging early. You see, the fact that your blood is so thick is because there is a protein film around non-processed amino acids and proteins which just stick around in the blood because you could not process them because tomorrow again you eat too much the day after and it gets worse and worse and worse. That's why we have this sticky blood. Then you go to the so-called specialist and he says, you have sticky blood, we have to make anticoagulation. Anticoagulation would be eat vegetarian for several weeks, don't eat any more sugar, take Alcala from the Finlandia pharmacy, take some minerals from the pharm uh, Finlandia pharmacy, very simple, and blood pressure goes down, oxygenation goes down, you feel more alert. So, <clears throat> these are signs of hyperacidity, and if you have long enough hyperacidity, it leads to cancer. Did you ever think about why the cancer rate increases? The, the numbers of how cancer rates increase is nearly parallel to the increase of protein intake. There is a parallel, and this parallel is not just a hazard. No, it has its reason behind this protein intake. We see it in, if, if a patient comes with such a blood, then hoof, then we have to do thermography, alpha regulation thermography, where we see the cancerous tendency very early. It's a very fantastic tool which we can use, or we have to do the dark field, and we can do other tests also which show us if there is a tendency, but very early. We look for cancer tendencies much earlier than the, <coughs> the orthodox medicine does, because they look, do you already have cancer? And they hope, for example, in a mammography, that they find the cancer early. But we find, with our means, we find the tendency early. And we can change so that you do not get the early cancer. <coughs> it's really uh, a difference. So, well, there are many symptoms. We jump over these symptoms of the hyperacidity, but let us go to gastrointestinal symptoms because the theme is gastrointestinal, which means intestinal diseases is the theme of tonight. And look what hyperacidity makes. 
bloating, colitis, diverticulitis, stomach acidity, heartburn, reflux, esophagitis, uh, the, the esophagus which pains, heartburn, reflux and acid of esophagus and periodontitis, dental periodontal disease, typical for hyperacidity. But you also have chronic symptoms, general symptoms, chronic fatigue, aging early, sleep disturbances, decreased healing tendencies, and increased cancer risk. I could go into each system of, of uh, well, body system, like here, skin, respiration, joint and muscles, and you find the typical symptoms of <coughs> the hyperacidity. If you buy my book, I hope that there are some books still around, everything is described in length. So, <coughs> we have a program, we have built up a program in our clinic how you can approach these problems very <coughs> intensively. It's a very simple program. It, in, it, <coughs> it contains three dimensions. Sorry. So, number one is <coughs> detoxification. When we look at our patients, <coughs> most of the patients, all cancer patients, without exception, all autoimmune patients, without e exception, autoimmune is lupus, is multiple sclerosis, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, Graves' disease, Hashimoto, thyroiditis, multiple sclerosis, these are autoimmune diseases, psoriasis, sclerodermia, all these are autoimmune diseases. Not a single patient, I used to be a rheumatologist and I have a lot of rheumatoid patients, a lot, a lot. And not a single one who comes to us is not highly toxic reflodin and irritates its regulatory and mucous membrane system by these toxins. Who wonders that they get sensitive to everything? <coughs> Toxic load. Next is intestinal health. Every patient gets intestinal upbuilding. It's easy, change of diet, increase of intestinal bacteria, so to say the grass on the football field, I told you, we have a, time, we have a surface of in our intestines which is like a football field, a soccer field. So, so you have the grass on it and the grass is the bacteria layer on this football field here. And this bacteria layer, they are the detoxifier, they are the metabolizer, they change, for example, fat to unsaturated fatty acids. The fact that you can take up fatty acids, it's not that you take fish oil. No, you need good intestinal bacteria. They change, for example, the olive oil to fish oil. They have this metabolic capacity, but also they are recognized as bacteria and they stimulate the immune system which lays along the layer of the intestines. Did you know that 80% of our adults, T cells, the lymph cells, the, the immune cells are laying around along the intestines? The intestinal membranes and Peyer's patches, these are the little lymph follicles where the T cells are in, T cells, thymus cells. But thymus we have as a newborn, thymus have the, the animals, but human adults, they don't have really a thymus. This thymus lays along the Peyer's patches in the intestinal membranes. <coughs> Millions of little, little lymph follicles which lay along the intestinal layer. And they are the carrier of the immune system. And they are, like in the army, the, <coughs> the 
the bacteria, they come and they always work around a little bit on this grass, on this lawn, the bacteria and the lymph cells, they are there and they control and they say, oops, bacteria are here, we have to train ourselves. So this is <coughs> the polarity between the bacteria and the good lymph cells. But the bacteria in our intestines, they don't make a disease, no. We need them for stimulation of our immune system. Very, very, very important. <laughs> if this is so important, let us look at our chronic patients. And we did more than 1,000 patients, because we have a lot of patients, we did more than 1,000 patients, cancer patients, autoimmune patients, especially cancer patients. <coughs> the fact that you get cancer is an immunitary issue. Not only a toxic issue, it's also an immune deficiency issue. Otherwise, your blood cells, they would recognize, oops, cancer cells are around, and they would eat them. Macrophages, the killer cells, would come and would eat the cancer cells. Why don't they? Because they are lazy. And why are they lazy? Because the bacteria in the intestines don't sit and train for the last some years these T cells. So, if this is true, we would find when we do in a cancer patient, but the same is also the, the fact in a patient with, for example, multi, uh, multiple sclerosis or even much more colitis, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, all these autoimmune diseases. When we look, how is the stool bacteria in these patients, we find 100 or even one thousandth of the number which they should have. Not only 10% less, no. A little percentage of this what they should have. If you find a cancer patient who comes from orthodox treatment or newly diagnosed to us or to you and your doctor makes a stool, comprehensive stool test and they have a normal stool flora a normal has a big range of normal. A normal stool flora, show me this patient. You get one week for free in Paracelsus Clinic. <laughs> no risk, no risk. Nobody ever showed me a cancer patient with normal intestinal flora. So, strange. I didn't learn this in university, even though I studied in two universities. Philadelphia and Zurich and, and Bern. So, because this is not known. But the consequence is that we have to build up our intestinal system. So, we did the bulk, we did a, a schedule. How can we do the upbuilding of the intestinal flora? What is the fertilizer, so to say? What can we give natural remedies as fertilizer? And <coughs> Finlandia always at the front of the developments, they produced a kit, Dr. Rao's intestinal upbuilding kit. And if you take this kit, your intestinal flora will get better and the immune system will raise. Measurable. When we measure the T cells, for the doctors in here, when we measure six weeks after you take this regularly and you change the diet to alkalinity, then you will have better and many more T cells. The T4 cells and the natural killer cells which you use, need for the cancer treatment gets increased. <coughs> we did a lot of studies about this. Therefore, the intestinal health is absolutely fundamental important for all the diseases which has in any way something to do with the immune system. All the autoimmune diseases, all the susceptibilities to infections, all the allergies and of course cancer. <coughs> all these immune diseases. I know it's a lot of, of information now, I'm sorry that I bring such a Swiss avalanche over you, <coughs> but, <coughs> but you have snow here too, so you might be used to this. Regeneration, this is the third point. The body has the capacity to rebuild, and this is the wonderful thing. We are not just 
a marble pillar. No, we are a dynamic system which can build better cells. But if you want to build up something, you have to give better nutrition to the cells so that the new ones build better. And this is not only what you eat, but also which kind and composition of amino acids you have. Because everything what we build up in our cells comes from the intestines. That's the source of what we build up. So, if the digestion is better, if the utilization of the food is better, you build better cells. Again, we are at the intestines. That's why we had to build up our own hotel in the Paracelsus clinic, and I have to be strict. That's why we have our, built up our own hotel, my wife and myself. We built up this hotel, and the diet around, and the patients, they get this diet and nothing else. And in the beginning, they complain, I think I go home, or, <coughs> or I can't eat without meat, or whatever comments. But after three weeks, they say, Oh, I eat, I, I sleep normal, I, I think clearer, I get much more alert, I feel better, I have no more headache, or my eye vision got better. Such things we hear, even though they come perhaps for ulcerative colitis or for cancer. But by changing their metabolism, they feel in its whole much, much better. So, <clears throat> you can read this. We had a, I had a patient, he was so thankful because we healed him from his prostate cancer without operation, without chemo and without radiation. And eight years it is since, and he said, what can I do for you, Thomas? He is one of the big shots in internet scene. He makes for big companies the web pages. Of course, nobody knows because he does it in the background. And I said, well, if you want to give me something, I gave you your health, make a web page for me. <laughs> and he made this web page for us. Go to this web page, then you will see about it's very simple web page, very simple. <laughs> You will see what we do in the clinic and you will have some information if you would like to apply, how to do, but also what we do. These three points are described. Or <coughs> you can buy my book, it's The Swiss Secret. The Swiss Secret is my book and it writes about this. That's it here. It writes in three steps. First, an intensive detox week which we do in our clinic, if you like, or if I prescribe. Then the three weeks cure to change your metabolism and intent, intestines. You don't need to come to Switzerland because it's so simple, you can do it at home. Just go according to the book. And afterwards, you probably get a little bit lazy about this. And that's why we have the maintenance diet also. And the maintenance diet is what you can eat for always. And how you can live even if once you are invited for a big dinner. It doesn't matter. It matters what you do always. What you do mainly. What you do at home. And if once you go to a big dinner or not, it doesn't matter. In the maintenance phase. Of course, in the first two, you have to be strict because then it changes in three weeks, it changes the metabolism. The T cells, the so called lymph cells, no, not so called, the lymph cells, the so called T immune cells, which is the ones which you need against cancer. Did you know that in three weeks you have the total lymph system recovered? New, new, the, the the, the turnover time of the lymph cells is three weeks. That's why you should do the three weeks cure. Because if you do it for three weeks, you get better new lymph cells. And also other good cells which are better. It's really an individualized cure who makes you more alert, 
who makes you heal from allergic diseases because allergies, even if it's peanuts allergy or cat hair or pollen or, or bee allergy, it is always the basis of the allergy comes always from the intestines and basis on a deficiency of the intestinal lymph system, on the intestinal system uh, mucous membranes. And this is the basic allergen. The basic allergy is normally for, based on food which you don't tolerate, but you do not know it. You know the secondary allergy, like pollen allergy, like bee, like whatever kind, cat hair or, the, or whatever allergy, you know. But the basic is the primary allergy, which is in 90% is a food intolerance. And 90% of the patients with secondary allergies, they have in the basis, they, in the background, they have the food allergy. Who? If we do the testing, I speak about Swiss patients. Of course, the Canadians are much better, probably. <laughs> but in Switzerland, 60% this would be, these patients would be food intolerant. These few would be not food intolerant. Of course, not so. But 60% and 40%. Of the healthy people which we take just from the road, 60% have food intolerances. Measured with orthodox testing, IgG blood testing, and it shows that you are food intolerant. When you are food intolerant, it destroys the intestinal membranes. Not zack! But slowly, 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 it is a process which destroys slowly the, the intestines. And it leads to a shrinking of the intestinal membranes. There is a big professor, a pediatrician professor, who is the Pope of gluten allergy of celiac disease worldwide, not only in Switzerland. Professor Rossi, absolute orthodox professor, he says, until you only have the first symptom of intestinal symptom by food intolerance, the intestinal membranes shrink one third to half. So, one third less T cells, one third less immune system, one third to half less res resistance to infections, to viruses, to cancer cells. Therefore, my mentor and teacher, Dr. Wertmann, one of the very big shots in pediatry, he said, cancer is an intestinal disease. Cancer is an intestinal disease? Strange, why? Because before you get the cancerous tendency, the intestinal T cells, they shrink. And we measure the intestinal T cells. We can measure it by thermography. We can measure it by the activity of the T cells, of the lymph cells. We can measure with cultures and blood testing and dark field. And so we can say, if you are, have a tendency to one of these chronic diseases, and if you have one, which is unfortunately in 60% of the cases the case, then you have to do something. And you better go to Finlandia Pharmacy to, <laughs> to, to, to ask what can I do against my hyper, hyper acidity? What can I do for my intestinal system? What can I do for my lymph system, for my immune system? And how can I get more resistant to environmental loads? It's a question of the inner milieu. It rebuilds, my program rebuilds the intestines. And that's what people like. It makes you look and feel younger and perhaps more male potency. <laughs> <coughs> Does it really work, our medicine? Yes. 
We do tests, we have so many patients, we do studies. And we studied more than 250 patients with prostate cancer and very high PSA. We have some few of these 250. We don't have the histological diagnosis because they said, I don't do a biopsy. So that's why I can't say 250 secure prostate cancer, but more than 200 had the diagnosis diagnosed by biopsy, prostate cancer. And we did a score, what is the expectation, and we looked two to five years. Now, nowadays it's five to ten years because the study is quite a time since. And it is still this result. 95% were highly satisfied because they have good urination, because they kept their male potency, because they don't have metastasization, because they have no pain. This is what counts for these people. Even though, not in all cases, the prostate cancer went away, but it stayed stable. Ulcerative colitis, the theme of today, 60% healing in two to three years, 60%. And the ones who come, they are all on immune suppressive remedies on cortisone. And we can take them away from cortisone. Only, not only, by finding the causing food allergens, the intolerance is the better name, by intensively upbuilding with essential amino acids, upbuild the intestinal membranes, and by intensively upbuilding, and here it needs more than one kit, unfortunately, it needs a longer time, one to two years, permanently upbuilding the intestinal flora. But it works. So it's really something <coughs> which is, which is uh, very successful. Asthma and allergies, well, we say this is an intestinal disease too, but we can look over it. It is always caused, fundamentally caused, the <coughs> by food allergies, which I have here, and by heavy metal load. Why does it work? because it follows Dr. Rao's points. So, for my main Paracelsus paradigms, I told you already. First of all, <coughs> every disease is multi-causal. Two, the regulation, the intestines are blocked by toxic load. Third, the intestines and the intestinal bacteria are the main factors to, for the immune system. Well, this we talked already. A weak intestines makes high histamine. Histamine is the mediator of allergic symptoms. That's why if you have hay fever, if you have cat hair, if you had whatever allergy, you have to take antihistamine. Your immunologist or your allergologist gives you antihistamines. Why? Because you have too much histamine. It works too much. So, by binding the histamine with chemicals, which make you so tired and gray in gray, these antihistamines, they take the, the, the so to say, the fantasy and the largeness of, the, of your perception, the antihistamines. But where do they come from, these histamines? They come from the destruction of the intestinal membranes. When the intestinal membranes fall apart, the cells, they release histamine, they get resorbed, and you get allergic symptoms, histamine symptoms. You run to the allergologist and he gives you antihistamines. If you protect your intestines because you no more take your food allergen, you no more need the antihistamines because they are not released anymore because the, the intestines doesn't go on in destruction. <coughs> Each organ can rebuild, I told you already. So, the multi-causality, 
the cause of many diseases is not known because there is no cause. Cancer does not have a cause. Colitis doesn't have a cause. Asthma does not have the cause. It has causes. It's a puzzle. And for a puzzle, it needs many pieces. And you have this puzzle, and you have this puzzle, and you have this puzzle. Everybody has different puzzle pieces. But together, it makes the picture of asthma, the picture of colitis, the picture of whatever. But if I would have a schedule, the puzzle pieces are always, like in school medicine, this and this and this and this. It wouldn't fit. And it, if I would follow such a rule, it wouldn't be successful. Because you, or you, or you, or you, have a different puzzle pieces. And we look for the single pieces. We look with dark field, we look with thermography, we look with, <coughs> with blood testing, we look with fatty acid analysis, and we look with the intestinal flora testing, the comprehensive stool test, where we also test the, the, the hormones, the intestinal hormones and their activity we test in depth. So, well, that's it. You can see it this way, the temple of allergy or of asthma, the temple of arthritis, the temple of colitis. Let us go back a little bit. Look at the pillars. Look at these pillars. Look at these pillars. Strange. The same. The same. <laughs> so that's why biological medicine is so simple, because it's always the same. Intestinal health, look for food allergies, the unconscious nerve situation, which is determined by the intestinal system too, and then the heavy metals, the intestinal flora, and nutrition and hyperacidity. It's always the same. And these pillars, they are simple to address. And if you change according to my diet, which is not a strange diet, it is a vegetarian diet, mainly no dairy protein and no sugar. This is the important thing. Little meat, no dairy protein and no sugar. And a lot of vegetables or green smoothies so that you get the the, the minerals, and that's it. Very simple. We make in our clinic and in our hotel, we make very simple menus. Swiss simple menus. Potatoes, vegetables, corn, such things. But no dairy product, even though we are in Switzerland. <laughs> <coughs> the influence here the key to getting healthy is better regulation. Well, we can jump over this. Very often we find heavy metal toxicity, dental problems, amalgam, and so. And then the patient says, I tell the patient, you have so many amalgam fillings. This is toxic. And the patient says, no, 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 Dr. Rao, absolutely this can't be because my amalgam feelings I have since 20 years and my ulcerative colitis I have since two years. So, <laughs> it's not explained. A barrel needs a certain time, this can be 20, 30 years, until it is filled. The barrel of environmental, of toxic, load fills very slowly until you have a symptom. Every good doctor would take a cup and catch the water which oversweeps. We take the big Paracelsus drill and we make a hole here. And the level goes down. And the level going down is, sorry to say, diet detoxification, intestinal health. So, <clears throat> you see, we have the same things here again. 
Look at this situation. Very toxic. <coughs> this situation can lead to such blockage of the blood. The patient would never come because of dental problems. No, they come for cardiac problems, for circulatory problems, for eyesight, which is decreased, as an example, because it's not enough. This blood is difficult to pump through the capillaries. That's why a regulative patient has a increased blood pressure. Congratulations, you have a high blood pressure. At least you try to do something. Only it's the wrong approach. We have to make that these cells, they flow separately. There is the thermoregulation. I can jump over it. This is a very detailed, info oops, detailed information which shows the, <coughs> the, the regulation capacity. We can do, oops, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We can do food allergy test. Food allergy test. It leads, if you have a food allergy, to destruction of the mucous membranes. It leads to an increased histamine, as I told you before, and it leads to a decreased serotonin. Decreased serotonin makes depression. We have thousands of patients in our treatment. <coughs> we have per day 300, two to 300 patients. You can believe me, many come with antidepressants. Very, very, very frequent. But within several weeks to months, they are free of antidepressive remedies because they are not needed. Because we can increase the serotonin, which they change. Antidepressants are serotonin enhancer. And we enhance the body's own serotonin production. So they can squeeze off the antidepressants in, I would say, 100% of the cases. Well, the next, we talked already, the intestinal bacteria, <coughs> a case. A lady came, <coughs> she became a dear friend of ours, a lady came with eosinophilic pneumonia. If doctors are in here, we know this belongs to the autoimmune diseases. It's a progressive pneumonia, gets treated by, <coughs> by cortisone, with cortisone treatment. And this cortisone treatment, even though it can be treated, but they need an increasing, the life expectancy is very bad. It's a really dangerous disease, eosinophilic pneumonia. It goes together with a change of the white blood cells and it goes together with a slow destruction of the lung. This lady was, <coughs> this was about 10 years ago or 12 years ago, she was at this time around 40 and she came after years <coughs> progressing of this. She was in, came from Cyprus, was in London, was in Haifa, was in Moscow for treatment because nobody really knew what to do. And what should I do if somebody comes from all these super clinics? What can I add? I can only add Dr. Rao's three programs, the triple program. And this is what we did detoxification, upbuilding of the intestinal membrane. You can see day one, this was the chest x-ray, day one. And she was on cortisone and she recently before had antibiotics because she used to have antibiotics again and again. Now this was the, <coughs> this was the dark field. It shows bacterial valencies well, for the, for the ones who know about dark field, this is a very bad dark field and it shows because of all these detritus which is here that there is a leakiness of the intestinal membranes which just lets bacterial detritus 
uh, into the system. And this irritates from inside. This was our understanding. So we did nothing and our intestines and lung belonging to one another. Yes, Chinese medicine says the lung and the large intestines, they are two organs which belong together. The meridian is even called lung, large intestine, meridian. These two systems, they belong together. Therefore, if the lung, yin, is diseased, we have to increase the large intestines, yang. So, we have to work on this organ. This is Chinese medicine. But Chinese medicine is not my invention. It exists <laughs> practice on billions of patients since thousands of years. It has much more background than orthodox medicine. Much, much, much more background than Chinese medicine. And therefore, I can only try because this is Chinese medicine wisdom. And we did only change the intestines. And we built up with the intestinal kit, the intestinal flora. After two weeks, the blood which was like this, looked like this. We did deacidification with Alcala. We did the <coughs> biomed treatment, the sanum treatment, the upbuilding of the intestinal flora. But it expressed on the blood. And this was the chest X-ray two, two weeks later. Two weeks later. Without cortisone, without antibiotics. Antibiotics is against anti anti bios the life. By the way, did you know that the average American school child gets, I don't know about Canada, but Switzerland is the same numbers, the American school child gets four times per year antibiotics. Four, that's average. Our children did not get antibiotics. Somebody had to compensate, statistically. So, <coughs> yeah, you know what I mean. This is average. <coughs> well, who wonders that she was very happy. She leads our biological medicine network in Cyprus and Greece now, this lady. She was so enthusiastic that she changed her life, she did this, and now she's our, uh, our representative in these Greek states. Well, we can go very quickly through the next slides. Now somebody, uh, something very interesting comes. 98% of the T cells, of the immune cells, are in the intestines when you are newborn. When you are newborn, milk from the mother comes. The milk, very happily, is not sterile. The breast is not sterile. Good that it is not, because this gives the first confrontation with bacteria from this universe. So the sterile little child gets infected and the saliva takes this bacteria. Superissimo, this is really good and important because this is the first stimulation of your T cells. That's why they are all waiting along the intestinal membranes, 98%. In school age, still 90%. And we, adults, we still have around 80% of our total immune cells in the intestines. Therefore, the intestinal upbuilding is so important for immune deficiencies, for infection susceptibilities, for allergies, and for cancer. Destruction of the intestinal wall leads to immune weakness, autoimmune diseases, and or cancer. So, how can we upbuild the <coughs> intestinal flora? Be alkaline, try to do things which make the body alkaline. 
alkaline means eat no sugar and no dairy protein. Why no dairy protein? Because the cow dairy is no more what it was 50 years ago. Beta lactoprotein increased by factor 3. Omega-3 fatty acids decreased by factor nearly 10 in comparison with the milk which you had 60 years ago. The cows are no more happy cows which are in the meadows on the Alps of Switzerland. No, it's no more this situation. Dairy is an industrialized product which comes from altered animals which still are called cows. But look at these cows, skeletons with big uterus. It's no more the cows of, of former times. There are very interesting studies about dairy and situation of the cow. There are still <coughs> villages in Switzerland where it's a must that the farmers have to bring their cows from the flat land in Switzerland, in medium Switzerland, up to the Alps. So, because they need the meadows in summertime to cut the grass, to get reserves for the winter. So, that's why they have to put them up to the, to the, to the Alps. And the Alps have to be, these meadows on the Alps, the wild meadows, have to be 1600 meters or more. These are the laws in these villages. So, these cows, they will they get brought or they have to, to walk up to the Alps. Two days after they are there, the increase, they have an increase in omega-3 fatty acids and they have a decrease in beta-lactoprotein because they eat a different food. And the omega-3 fatty acids, they increase by factor nearly 10 when they are up there. When they come back, it decreases again. But our cows, your cows, they live in barns, as far as you can call this living, and they are in these barns, and they get artificial food, which is not even cow typical. They get wheat as food normally or they get corn as food, only to produce milk or meat for beef. Did you know that 60% of the total corn consumption worldwide is used for beef meat production? And on the other side, and sugar, and sugar production, and on the other side we have hunger in billions of people. So, we do really things which are not correct. Therefore, eat vegetarian and do green smoothies. There is literature about green smoothies, how to make the green smoothies. This is grinded, blended vegetables, where the cellulose, the fibers are also cut. You know, it's not pressing, it's blending, so that the fibers are also in there. For what fibers? What is the difference? Because the fibers, if they are cut very, very, very thin, very little fragments, they are the food for the intestinal flora. And with these fibers, in the press uh, juices, you don't have the fibers. In the green smoothies, which is blending, you have the fibers and you feed the bacteria better. Or you take the Biomed <coughs> reflorestation kit and don't take antibiotics. We do not use antibiotics because we do not need them. We make the body produce its antibacterial strength itself. Then we don't need antibiotics. I told you four years anti against bios the life. Four years, per, uh, four times per year, the average school child. Now look at here. This is a healthy mucous membrane, and this is a diseased one. The cells here, these cells, these little cells here on these feely, 
they fall apart, they make a secretion, and this secretion contains histamine. And this histamine comes into the intestines and gets resorbed through the intestines and goes to the blood. And then the patient has an allergy, so-called allergy, because of the high histamine. The effect is allergies, depression, chronic inflammation, eczema, asthma, and so on and so on. Look at this patient. She allowed me to present this picture. This patient was a patient since childhood neurodermitis, looking like a fish, very, very bad situation. Since decades she had this, and she needed cortisone when she went out or when she went to public, uh, uh, you know, into public, then she had to put creams and so on and so on. Of course she tried everything in her 50 years or how long she had it already. What we did, she had an allergy to gluten and dairy. Bad case, allergy against both. So she really had to do a strict diet. But her intestines were so destroyed that it needed about a year or even more. Much later, she came to New York to a speech of mine. I, I lost contact. She came. And in a speech like this, I saw, oops, there is Mrs. So-and-so. And, oh, I lost contact. Hopefully she doesn't bad mouse. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, she was standing up, showed this picture, and this she was. And I asked, I was amazed. I asked because I have lost contact. And she said, well, I didn't need to come back because I just did what you said and I took 50, five zero, 50 milliliter of flaxseed oil every day for two years or even more, which is a lot. But this make, makes the skin nice again. And if you take good oils, omega-3 fatty acids, flaxseed oil as an example, or alternating with, with uh, night primrose oil or with hemp oil, just plant oils of high quality, cold pressed. It makes the skin much better and also the inner skin, the intestinal membranes. <clears throat> Therefore, the flaxseed oil and zinc she took and this makes the whole thing much better. <laughs> I like him so much. <laughs> uh, a, a real, yes, a real hero. Yeah. But you know what? Why do, I, why do I admire him so much? Well, of course, only the, the, the actor, you know, the, what he acts. Why do I admire this? He was always confronted with the difficult cases. <laughs> you know, this, the very bad robbers, the very bad criminals, he was confronted. They catched him when somebody very bad was around. The big sheriff had to come. And he had a, such a simple method, shooting out of the hip, <laughs> puff, puff, and the problem was solved. <laughs> Yeah, but these were people who have been everywhere and did all their bad things there. That's why he was cat. He was they, they, they brought him, and I said I need a John Wayne method. <laughs> we get all these difficult cases into the Paracelsus clinic, and it's so difficult. I need a method. A John Wayne method. Shooting out of the hip, puff, puff, and this, the problem is solved. <laughs> I not even demand 100%, but 80, please. Yes. And I found this method. Shoot number one, no dairy products, puff. Second, shoot no wheat and sugar. And it makes 
80% success. I even could say 90% of the chronic patients, they change metabolically within three weeks to three months so that their disease changes with these two shots. Honestly, I would not know if you or you or you are really responding. Perhaps it would be no peanuts. Perhaps it might be no eggs. But 80% you catch with the first two. It's not the only step to healing, of course. But it's an important step to take load away from the organism so that the intestines are allowed to rebuild together with the reflorestation kit their intestinal mucous membranes and their flora, which takes six weeks to six months, but then they really have a different metabolic situation which makes them heal from so many other things too. Yeah. And again, we can look if it works with the thermography. I don't have the time to go into this device, but it's a very, very good device which helps the, <coughs> the patient. There is the company which makes the, the thermography, the alpha, a thermography company which makes this. A good inactive intestinal flora is the first and most important condition to a healthy immune system. Did you know that we have much more bacteria than we have cells? You see here a bag which speaks to you, a skin bag called Thomas Rau. And in this bag we have cells, my organ cells. But in this bag we have about 10 times more intestinal bacteria than we have Thomas Rouse cells. So it's a philosophical question, <laughs> am I a bacteria bag? <laughs> yes, I am. So I tell you this to show, to show that bacteria are not just always bad. Most of them are super important and good and we have to care for them. Because if you have a good bacterial overgrowth of your intestines, the intestinal flora they are called, on a good grass no weed comes up. Ha. No weed comes on a good grass. Because when you have a good intestinal flora, then you would not have Clostridia, not have Klebsiella, not have fungi, not have viruses, because your immune system would be stimulated and would not allow viruses to come and would not allow wrong bacteria to grow. And even if a weed seed would come on this bad flora, uh, on this good flora, it wouldn't grow. The same as on the football field, if you have a good grass, it's healthy and no weed comes up. And the same inside also. Therefore, care for your good flora, then you don't need antibiotics, because they would only destroy your good flora. <coughs> Okay, that's it. We have more. That's what I just said. And they can be restored by, by good food and correct nutrition and sanum remedies. This is it. I would like to stop here. I could talk for hours and hours. <laughs>